And hello again, this is Philip Steiger at TheBestTweedy.com with another quick video on some of the cool things you can do with Project Dog Waffle. This is Howler 9 going soon into version 9.1, not the carrot. When you look under this one here, you'll see it's uh, Evolution Generation 4 9.1 and not the carrot, our code name for this particular release. Uh, what I wanted to show you here is something uh, focused on animation and uh, in creating some of these visual effects that might look a little bit like a circle of fire or maybe uh, a sun, a star that's uh, occluded in part by a planet in front or uh, it might be something useful for creating some animated backdrops you know maybe you have a cartoon character that's running towards you and uh, you want to have it against some sort of a flashy plasma fire of some sort like this um, that could also be perhaps let's look at another version something i did before that and that was this one here and let's go load all this one has 344 frames and uh so this one let, let me zoom it in a little bit so we can see it it's originally at 640 by 360 and there it is so it's a flux of particles uh, coming out from a star maybe it's about to go supernova and explode so this could be really useful for uh, science fiction uh, backdrops uh, creating all sorts of uh, uh, hyper jump uh, scenes maybe where you know jumping into a, a vortex tunnel or <laughs> all sorts of imaginary reasons to have this kind of uh, imaging capability. So what I'm going to do is show you how I got to this. All right, so initially, uh, let's start from scratch, right? So we'll erase to the background, um, to black, and create an animation sequence. Uh, I'll make it shorter this time, uh, just to get there a little bit faster. I'll say 99 frames. So that's about three seconds long when we play that 30 frames a second. Let's make sure FPS here shows 30 frames a second and play and of course nothing shows uh, there's no movement from one frame to the other now we're going to use one of those filters that bring us the starry night right now with the starry night uh, you can actually uh, do the full screen preview and so let me go and cancel that and make this a little bit bigger so we can see it a little bit better and go back to it right there animated starry night where was it up there Keep it here to the side. All right, so a couple of things we can do with that. In full screen preview, we can see it move right here. It's fast enough usually. Star size. Uh, let's keep it star count there. Let's have a lot of them. All right, and then uh, keep it small. And that's where you already have some control. Let's get the speed up a little bit. That's where you have some control already for um, very fine features or more blobby big features. And let's go this route. Let's go with relatively fine features. A little bit of softness might not hurt too much. Let's give that, let's add some glow. That will make it slower though. Um, be careful there if you have a slow system. Uh, atmosphere, no, we don't need that. We need pitch black in the background. Uh, the vector, this is in which direction it's flying. So you might, uh, you know, because for instance, you use this uh, sometimes also to, to show uh, warp speed, right? You're going into space <laughs> and you're uh, you're going to to go perhaps into a particular direction with it <clears throat> but in this case here we'll just keep it uh, all zero let's reset that and let's make it a little bit smaller still there all right so <clears throat> and perhaps less glow and softness there all right so I'm going to render that bingo so now we have this animation and uh, I'm going to suggest saving that as an AVI let's go save this um, this will be flux zero or flux. What's the other one? A. This will be flux dash zero. Uh, same name and oh, it was an error. Why is that? Hmm. Huh, weird. Okay. <coughs> well, <coughs> something weird happening. Maybe that. Well, I don't know why. Let's not expand on that. Um, let's go and you know what? Let's save it just as a regular DWA dog waffle animation. Let's call this zero. There you go. No questions asked, done. Okay, so now this one, what I'll do is, um, what I want to do is have the stars kind of become uh, trails, so so that it looks like they leave some sort of a, uh, a motion trail, right? So there's a couple of ways to do that. One is you can, you can do a zoom, a, a radial zoom, so a blur, a zoom blur, there it is. So you could do something like this here, right? And as you, as you put this factor in there and the quality, that will smear it quite nicely. 
So that's one way to do it, but of course you don't want that on just this one frame, you want it across the entire frame sequence. Um, you can do that with the timeline right here. The timeline filter will do that same thing. So you could go right here under the filters, choose your blur category, find the zoom blur, there you go, and give it a little bit, don't give it too much. Oh, there's an angle here also. Oh no, that's not, a, that's not the right one. Uh, that's the motion blur, zoom blur, there you go. So with the zoom blur, you got the factor, you got the quality, and apply that and so that will give it a little bit of a um of a zooming effect here right it fe feels like they are they're really whisking by you because they are now like little trails so that's one way to do that and let's see what else um oh yeah the, the the way i actually did the first time was to actually give it a let me do an undo here quick okay so we're back to the original here um <coughs> there is also a ghosting capability so with the ghosting you can um have it produce uh, maybe 14, a uh, ghost 14 frames at a time. Let's do, not too many, let's do nine, apply that. And that one's actually rendering from the back frame to the first frame, so it's kind of funny, it goes backwards in the preview. But <coughs> what you see here now is the same thing. It's, it's little trails, but they are brightest at the very front, right? So it's a sort of a ghosting fade effect. And, um, and let's see if we can zoom in here and really kind of recognize that. Uh, the, the trails will show, well, except for the very last ones here that doesn't show there, but all the way through here, it basically shows like they are you know, fading to the distance. You see this one here, it's fading towards the end, but it's, it's brightest at the front. And so that's an interesting one to use. Let's apply it again. And so that way we have even more of that. And another way would be, of course, to give it perhaps 14 or something. No, that's too blurry. Let's undo that. Um, let's go and now see what we have here. So we have this level, and uh, perhaps we can um, increase the dynamic range here. So it will show a little bit brighter. Whatever is uh, the brightest level was not bright enough, so now it's will, it will go up to the, the top brightness. Now, at that point, we might want to go back to that zoom blur. Right, so let's go back to the one we saw earlier. Uh, motion blur, zoom blur, there it is. Mystic vision is an interesting one too. Make sure you keep it in the middle. Don't zoom from the side, but zoom it from the middle. And you can easily just reset here to 50 for the X and 50 for the Y values. Center X and Y. <coughs> and then that way we can uh, adjust perhaps how much of that factor we want and the quality. Don't forget that and apply that. So now we have even more of a streaming effect like this, right? See that? See how it's sort of, uh, there you go. See how it's like like streaming particles coming out there now, right? So this is this is good. Now we can perhaps add a sun on there or a, you know, a, a, a bright, uh, shiny star object. Uh, so that could be, for instance, down here under the uh, uh, lens flares. And with the lens flares, we'll put it right there in the middle. But uh, make sure you get the flare settings to choose uh, which lens flare type you want. Now, some of them look pretty neat, like this one here. This one already has sort of streaming stars coming out. So that will mingle with that really nicely. <coughs> Let's make sure, again, we put it kind of in a smack dab in the middle at 50. If I can go there. And 50, and there you go. And then so you can adjust the level. Maybe you can keyframe that so that it doesn't seem like always the same. So it, it varies a little bit, right? Maybe it comes like so initially so keyframe that for this place right there at the beginning and then <coughs> all the way here it kind of dims a little bit like so and then go here a little bit stronger kind of a little outburst and actually make this burst a little bit faster so change where in time that burst comes you can grab this little hand that the little red handle uh, and then go back here and bingo come back down and uh, there's all sorts of other parameters you could change. These are just the main, the level is the main parameter here in the timeline. But the, <coughs> the, uh, the lens flares have their own settings and you can edit a variety of, of parameters and perhaps find something even more interesting uh, to play with here. So what I'm going to do is just render that and uh, see what we get out of this one. All right, so here we got uh, some interesting um, animation already looks like a little bit of a blurry but also a little bit of a boost or a, a, a you know a big bang theory kind of explosion uh, I don't know if this is where you have the initial formation of galaxies uh, <coughs> there's all sorts of uh, things we can imagine with this let's switch to a different style 
maybe something like this. Yeah, there you go. And maybe we need a different set of keyframes for that one. So we can have uh, perhaps the very bright one at the end and have some variations like this <coughs> and apply that. It's interesting. You can you can combine those, you know, set the keyframes at different locations and then you see that render on top of the prior one. And as you play it, you now see sort of different uh, radiation events happening, different blasts. And uh, so that's that's the starting point, you know. Now another thing you could do is perhaps blur it a little bit again. Right now it's still fairly crisp here, so you could do uh, first of all you could do another pass of that. Uh, um, what is it? The, the ghosting, right? So you could do another level of ghosting and uh, perhaps uh, a little bit faster, just five or six levels. <coughs> and uh, let's see. So we've got this. Um, what else? Oh, uh, what if we save this and then use it as a displacement map to ourselves? Right, so <coughs> first of all, I'll, I'll save this as a AVI. Let's try again LVI. I don't know why it didn't work the second ago, but let me go and make sure that we are on our AVI, on our D drive, <coughs> the daily dose, and there you go. So here's the flux A. Let's go with the flux B. <laughs> and okay this one he took it and let's make sure we use the lossless codec and so here we've got this saved which means we can now use it as a um, animated swap image right right there animated swap image open the API AVI and there it is let's use this as our a animated swap image and uh, then go and uh, use it as a displacement map. Or let's say we got displaced by swap. Let's see how that looks. Uh, it's not doing, oh, there it is. Yeah, so that would do some funky stuff. Look at that. Suddenly it looks like it's bl flying around the planet, you know, like it's doing an impact on, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe you could superimpose a, another dark body here and make it look like you have a, um, a collision of two worlds. So there's all sorts of really funky stuff you can do with that. Let's go apply that and, and see this. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, some funky stuff happening with that. Let's go and undo um, and see if we can do something else. Instead of the displace, let's do a pool displace. That one can have some other interesting... Oh, yeah, that one comes like uh, really interesting also. Look at that. Okay, apply that. So the key, the, the key thing here is that y you'll want to play with that. You want to explore, you want to experiment. Look at that, so different now in appearance. Um, and maybe you're looking for a still image, right? Maybe you're looking for just a single static image, but you don't know which one to choose or even how to get there. Well, so what you do is you, you, you animate it across many different possibilities. And uh, eventually you say, oh, that's the perfect one. That's the one I've been looking for. Or maybe more a bit of a fuzzball like that. Or, you know, glary, f burning fire or something like that. So, yeah, lots of different ways to do that. Let's undo this. And uh, see one more thing. Instead of uh, displays, we could do a combination. Uh, combine, composite with swap. Um, Combine in a couple of different ways, like luminosity, multiply, subtract. Oh, that's all going to be dark because it's the same video on top of the same video, subtracting itself. Um, so we could do that perhaps with another video that we've already done. Um, but uh, let's go and not do this one. Let's see, add, multiply, divide. That's not going to be, that's all going to be one screen. It's going to do a little bit of a, yeah, that's probably not going to show much change there. So, you know, if you have the window by itself, okay, that might be a, an interesting one. Let's apply that, texture mode. <coughs> so there's many different ways to combine these, right? And that's really the idea is to explore and discover. All right, so let's see one more thing, uh, or a few more things. We have perhaps a little bit of a blurriness we can add to that and then kind of uh, make it tighter again. So we have the blurriness uh, here. Let's give it the mystic vision. Oh, let's do the mystic vision, why not? And so the mystic vision, there you go. That will also, that's, that's kind of combining the light diffusion in the direction of the... Uh, you know, wherever you put the hot spot. So keep that one nicely uh, tight in the middle, right there at 50. 
and and then adjust the, the quality and the factor perhaps of how much of that again that's one you can adjust also over time so you can keyframe it right you could say okay here further down i want more and then here i want less again and and then here sh and there's an outburst and other more and so you have uh, you have control over where these events happen where these outbursts and these explosions and how quickly also they they drop off or they come up right so you could uh you could change those over time and apply that all right so let's go like this so you now have all sorts of additional um, effects here there you go uh let's see what else so we've got a little bit of a um let's do this let's do a little bit of a motion a gaussian blur uh, i mean a little bit come on not that much just a little bit gaussian blur just a tiny little bit and apply that and then uh, bring it back to higher contrast so we do something like a value adjustment and in the value adjustment you can go to very high gamma or contrast so now suddenly you've got you've got a a bit more of a sen defined center you know almost like the center of the sun and then you got a little bit of a corona around it uh, don't overdo it but you know something like this here there you got the surface of the sun almost visible um, and or maybe it's the nucleus of a, an atom you know if protons and atoms uh, fighting for space as the whole thing is about to go ballistic uh, <coughs> so let's see then we can go back to the other effects right apply some more of that um, you know <laughs> whatever the other effects were and so that's that's that you know you basically have uh, a lot of different ways to to play with this and look at that this started from that star field right this this is an animation that started simply from um what was it the animated starry night right so i'm going to do one more thing here i'm going to save this um as a let's save it as a DWA here so that's going to be number one DWA and and then I'm going to make that actually my as so I'm gonna undo the open DWA and make that the DWA number one there it is <coughs> and and then I'm going to load um, the AVI I had initially the very initial one either this one flux B or flux A let's take flux A all right Okay, it's a different count though. This one I, m I might need to reduce the count. So uh, let me go to frame number 99. One or two more. There, make that the in point, the in marker, then the out point. And I really should have done that actually when I loaded. Rather than deleting afterwards, if I really want just the first 99 frames, let's do it this way here. Let's go and you know, you know what on that level we can't that's when we do the avi load okay so at this point i'll just go and set the out marker and then delete the range uh, delete the block that will take a second or two and um <coughs> you see here we now have 99 frames okay so it's a shorter animation but we can impose superimpose it with the other one we have the swap buffer that's animated also and the two are now animated on their in their own rights and we can combine them again in different ways so what we could do is for instance uh first of all get rid of this thing here we don't need this one anymore uh let's go back to the timeline and in the timeline go do some sort of a exploring of combining the two divide will show us some interesting things subtract there's a black hole there now look at that Right, something swallowing the remaining uh, environment near the star that once uh, existed there. Then we have multiply, giving you new colors, uh, luminance. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. That's intense. <coughs> and uh, so let's apply that one just to see it a little bit bigger and play. So yet again, many different combinations and new uh, resulting colors that we can see out of that around gray uh greater than that one picks the brighter parts texture that one had some interesting effects a little bit earlier uh, binary well that's sort of a mask it generates 
And that one will kind of uh, look interesting too. That, that will kind of generate kind of bands. The colors might be off though. You might want to perhaps grayscale it later on. This is something you might use also as an elevation map now, an animated elevation map in Puppy Ray later on. Let's go and undo that and explore some more XOR. Always funky colors there. And maybe that's what you're really looking for. Something for, uh, I don't know, some sort of a disco lighting effect, right? Uh, undo that. Um, let's see, soft light. Yeah, that's interesting too. Let's apply that. It's very subtle at that. At times you, it gets very subtle as to what the differences are. Let's see if there's any impact if we now ad uh, adjust the dynamic range. Not much there. And then there's one last thing you might want to do. Because right now if you play this, it's only 99 frames or 3 seconds long. right? But it jumps from the end back to the beginning. See, if I go close to the end here, or close to the beginning, it's very different. So it jumps. You can visibly see the jump. Boom, right there. So if you want to get rid of that, one thing you can do is you can make it seamless, or looping. Make loopable, right? And then that way you, you, you basically uh, dedicate the last 10, 20 frames, or whatever number you want there, to fading over with the first, you cut them away and fade them over to the first uh, same number of frames. So the animation is going to be shorter, and you can always fix that with uh, time stretching and say no I need back to 99 frames and make sure you do a frame blending on that so <coughs> we now have we're back to 99 frames as in the original but it is now loopable you should not see much of a jump there anymore because we faded it over when we made it loopable we faded the last 20 or so frames over the first 20 of uh, 20 frames and so now we have sort of an animation that's looping and just stays there forever and ever and that's it for this quick little demo on how to create some animated starry visual effects. Um, let me just look that last one up again. Load AVI. Um, this one here. That one had a little bit more blurriness to it. But same idea, same experiments, same I, you know, combination of different uh, techniques that we just saw here. Alright, thanks for watching. Thank you.